We'll call the meeting to order. Um, actually, we've already called the meeting to order, and we had an executive session at 6.30. Um, nothing to report from that. Um, first, okay, why don't I have my agenda out? So I guess we do announcements first, right, since we've already called the roll. Um, the first, uh, we have two guests here. We have uh, Sergeant Watson and Superintendent, uh, Street Superintendent Hamby here to talk about bike lane update. Come on up to the podium. Good evening. Um, back in <laughs> September, I attended a meeting and um, Mr. Sims asked me about the, um, the, the safety of the children riding their bike and walking to the to the high school down West South College. There's a um, problem with speeding. The drivers aren't paying attention. However, students aren't paying attention either. <laughs> really? um, I was able to get with Mr. Cryer and they <coughs> did make some announcements and um, several times just about bike safety and went over um, some rules and, and all that kind of good stuff. Anyhow, um, I was able to get with Jason Hamby and um, he put together these papers that um, are being passed down to you with several different different options on them. Um, I am happy to say that option A was completed last week, which is the um, striping, the restriping. So um, it's more visible on West South College from Xenia all the way down to the high school. Wait, and we added Cheryl marking? No, those are the only things that weren't added at this time. Okay. But that's planned to do or? That's planned to do whatever you have to decide. Okay. And then um, the speed trailer was also um, it was also brought up, and ours is no longer functioning correctly. So um, I did have uh, Ken Metz get some estimates, and to get one that works um, solely off of solar that we put up on West South College is roughly between they range between four and five thousand dollars a piece however if we get one that we would hook directly to a pole and that we could connect into the village's electricity um, that would be between three and four thousand dollars so you're it's about a thousand dollars less so that would be another option um, that we could look at also but you're that's that's simply a deterrent right uh, right um, all that does is and you wouldn't keep it speed. there I'm sure you wouldn't be keeping it there all the time well, no those are permanent oh those would be permanent. oh okay. yeah so you have one that runs off of solar Mm -hmm. And then another one that would be connected to our village. Like and where would, where would you think to put that? Um, I, actually, um, Chief might have something better, but the speed trailer we were going to put in Mr. Sims's yard um, in that area. <laughs> <laughs> so he had volunteered it because that's a good area. It's like far enough away to slow people down, but close enough to make a difference to the high school. But as, as when you talk about a speed trailer, are you talking about one of the big ones, or can't you get just those smaller signs that run off a of solar that it's not a, a full size trailer? Right, exactly. And Is that are, what you're talking about? Yes, that's about? what I'm okay. talking about. Yeah, and those are about four to five thousand dollars a piece. Okay. We right now have a speed trailer. It has to be put behind something. Right. And then it'll run off of batteries, or it can be plugged in if someone's kind of does do that. But. It's, uh, the batteries are gone and it needs to be so. Right, but if we're going to make something permanent, one of those smaller, less smaller, obtrusive. Right. So the one that we have is the one we used to have out on Polecat? That's correct. Okay. So option B and option C, um, Jason would have more information on. So what, I mean, what are your thoughts? Is I mean, is, <coughs> as far as enforcement and well right now when we have you know an officer available we tend to sit on Gaunt Park all right the places for us to sit are very limited on West South College mainly you know um, Gaunt Park sometimes I sit at the end of uh, Mr. Sims's street um, you know we can sit at the end of the streets but then you have to move every time you know a bus comes around a car comes around or they have to go around you that's not safe also and so, you know, there's really no safe place to sit except Gaunt Park. Problem is, is that you're back so far, I can't get the traffic yeah, that's, that's going point. east. I can only get the traffic going west. Mm. And still, but that's not really solving the problem. It really isn't. 
But what about the bikeway? <coughs> Did I miss it? Did you talk about that? Jason's going to talk about that. Oh, 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 gotcha. And, and what did Mr. Cryer, how, what was his response? I mean, are you guys going to work with the kids or talk to no, the kids? No, I mean, kids? he went ahead and um, I asked that he make, you know, announcements or remind the, the children of, you know, bicycle safety and stuff, you know, the proper way to ride to school. Don't be riding four in a row, and which is what they were doing. Um, they weren't, they were jumping out in front of traffic and stuff. However, cars are also speeding and right. stuff like that, so. When we're out there, of course, they don't, but like I said, it only helps in one direction, given mm -hmm. the options that we have. Okay. So it kind of has to be a two-pronged right. attack. Right. Jason? Um, as Sergeant Watson had say, or stated, um, the option A, we went ahead and, and um, been proactive and tried to get that remarked. Um, I know Mr. Sims loves uh, right along South College and said that it was um, it was kind of faded so we were, we're really proactive in getting those markings back down so option A is basically taken off except for the sheriffs as specified um, option B um, the village currently has about uh, 3100 linear feet of bikeway down this way and it's really in in pretty good condition um, the vegetation needs to be removed um, but, you know, it's a perfect candidate for, for an overlay. The, the tricky part of <coughs> talking to a couple um, uh, real, or, um, pavers is that getting a truck and or paving machine, it will basically all be hand work. So that will drive the price up. Because it's up off of the roadway. And yes, because it's up off the roadways and the Catawba trees and everything else are in the way. So, um, but currently we have about 3100 um you take that times your four and a half foot inch and a half overlay we're looking right at about uh 73 to 8500 dollars for this area um if you flip to the do you have it on the back page the back page um has a total of 49,000 um <coughs> 230 236 and that is for dayton street and um, West South College. What it doesn't include and what I mean I think we should probably include in this is the bikeway that runs from Allen all the way out to Cahoe because that will be all of our bikeways that are like that done. And, and I'll have to add that to that number. But from it'll go from where? From Allen Street all the way out to Cahill. Where it runs past okay. the dollar store. Where it yeah, runs I past the dollar store. From Allen to Cahill. Okay. Okay. Dollar okay. General. Oh, okay. So, um, do you need to remove the asphalt that's there, or will this just be overlay? It'll just be an overlay. Which um, street does it? It starts on <coughs> uh, College, the College Street there. It'll start on Xenia Avenue and run all the way mm -hmm. to East Enid. It go, is, is that where it is now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, just so I'm clear, you're it's talking what? about resurfacing the existing cool. bikeway on Dayton West, West South, South, College South College and Virginia Avenue. Yes. And I mean if 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 there's if there's money in the budget, obviously I would love to do out on Allen Street to Cahill because I think that that also needs to be yeah. upgraded as well. Yeah, so. That's probably more so Dayton more Street would cost above four, more than 40,000. Dayton and South College. Dayton and South College. No, I, I know, but uh, but the number that we have for West South College is around 8,500. So 41,000 would be for Dayton Street alone. That that for, that 73 number in the 85 was if they can get their machinery on top. The 49,000 is all of both of those Dayton Street and South College, but they would do have to do the handwork if they're not able to get get the okay. machines up on the bike path so you're Here's saying my, you're not sure that we could do the the 8300 for that's just that's an if for for South, uh, just South for college. South College yeah yeah that's that was just if they could get their machines on there but we don't know if they yeah. can no okay he, he states that they're going to have to do some tree work to get their machines up there and he said and then that's where he supplied me with this 49 um, estimate and said that that's all handwork. 
Uh -huh. That's but not it, taking into consideration. It, I just, I mean, I can't imagine that there aren't going to be trees involved. And are there, what, what happens? What's the transition <coughs> at, the, at the streets? Are there ramps or are... It, it's a gradual slope, the ramp. So the cur there isn't a curb there? There's a curb, but it goes down to meet the, the meet the existing curb. Okay. Yep. Is so it it is, it's not it's not a drop off, if, if that's what you're asking. The the contractor you talked to so you're talking about asphalt. Yes, ma'am. Um, do they have a machine specific for uh, asphalt sidewalks type? You know, this kind of pathway, or are they using larger machines? It's it's a larger machine, but the the screed in the back can shrink down. It, he said it can go from four and a half foot all the way out to eight foot. It's basically what they use for golf cart, uh, like uh, paving around um, like golf courses and everything. Did so you talk to Green County, Green County Parks to see who they use when they do the bike trail, mm -hmm. our bike trail? I, I really didn't. That might, you might want to do that. Yeah. They may have somebody that has, do we have any evidence that people are going to use it? I think it's a good idea. Personally. Well, I, I, I've watched the kids and, and uh, they have tried it and uh, they end up having to get off, especially it's as a little they, get, they get closer up to uh, the school. They, they'll, they'll use it uh, from uh, Senior Avenue up to Green Street, I think it is. And, and then it gets... Well, can we sort of strongly suggest that it's used as opposed to the streets if we do this work? Absolutely. I mean, what's the... How are you going to control it? Absolutely. There's no law. I mean, their bikes are allowed in the street, so how can you do that? Are you going well, to decide that's, riding their bike in the street? Well, I'm just asking, yeah. right? So what we would do um, to encourage it. What about um, bike paths on the street itself? Dur that's our option C, <coughs> and that's going to be our no, most... No, I don't mean in making the street wider. Is there room on no. the existing mm -hmm. street? No. No. no, there's not. There is on Dayton Street. There is not on South College. There is on Dayton Street. There is on well, Dayton Street. Then yes, we can do that on Dayton Street. Yes, ma'am. What about parking? From is it going to interfere with parking? Um, well, what was originally proposed um, when Dayton Street got redone was a bike lane just for the would be um, the south side of Dayton Street. So from Stafford all the way to the school was supposed to be a bike lane wide enough for both lanes of, of bike travel out and in back into town. I don't know if parking was included on that. I can definitely find that out for you and let you know. But at the same time, I just, I just know that that's what was proposed and it didn't go through. I would like to know. Okay. Because as a cyclist, I have concerns about whether those bike paths separate from the street would be used. And the only one that I think really, really would be useful is the Zena Avenue one. And that's actually used more by pedestrians than it is by, because it, because it really, is an extension of the yeah. sidewalk mm -hmm. and and probably should have been considered when we did the new other the rest of the sidewalk on Xenia Avenue. Yeah, but South College is, is mainly <coughs> for everyone, but our focus is on, on mm -hmm. this. Yeah, definitely on the citizen. I think it would be huge. That's I think a good they idea. Use it. I they do too. Use those, like Mr. Sim said, um, and they're on it a lot, and they do. They jump off and they go on the street. Mm. So well, as somebody um, looked at, I mean, if, if you walk down every inch of it to know whether there are obstructions, whether there are trees, whether there are issues that are going to continue, even if it's repaved, that are going to present problems? Yeah, I mean, down South College, you still have the Catawba trees. Um, that, that's the biggest thing is the Catawba trees. Yeah, the Catawba trees. So, but does, does, that, does that obstruct this bike trail? Does it, does it get shortens it up or a bit short shortens the width you still have the four it. you still have the four and a half foot uh, it's just right now it's so rough and it's got a lot of vegetation and the kids just don't don't want to use it i mean they'd much rather ride out on the, the surface we just did a couple of years ago so. i mean are you but i'm sure it's rough because of the tree roots are you going to be able to cut down the tree roots or no, no, how no, are it, it's rough because of the aggregates is, is it's breaking, breaking down. down okay okay uh, yes, so it's so not the tree you you have a couple spots karen where there is tree roots and and, and you're you're going to have that but i i wouldn't grind anything down because you're going to kill 
Right. right. Yeah. Talking trees there. And there. Um, so. and you could also check um, not just with Green County, but um, Fairborn that path that that track around community park is about the same width oh as, actually yeah it is as as what we're talking about here so they may have a contractor that does something i mean because that thing kind of winds yeah everywhere yeah yeah, I think that's green, yeah. is it no oh, is, is it green i think the yeah. county's jurisdiction where community park east is mm -hmm. right side of high school that's one of those little <coughs> concepts that's all okay and, well if uh, you yeah if you start with Green County Parks, Chris Bell, whoever you talk to there will be able to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's right about the same width as what we're mm -hmm. talking about. But so. the, the key determining factor is the trees. Right. I mean, in this area. Because so. you've, you've got to work around. I, and I, I thought there was a number in here. I, I, I counted each one of them. I thought that there was like 126 trees, on top of trees down through there. Wow. They are beautiful. So. <laughs> Brian, beautiful. Is, this an, is this an official bike trail? Oh, 52, and, sorry. And, would you consider that a bike, a, 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 a what do I want to say? A, a rails to trails kind of. Thing. No, no, it's not, it doesn't have to be rails to trails, but is, right. is it worth investing money in? Is it, is it a significant enough and usable enough bike trail to continue to use? Um, I, I'm conflicted, I'll have to say. I mean, I'm kind of attracted by the idea of a cycle track, something on road. Um, but I think it's worth exploring. Um, and especially, so Jason, I just looked at the second page. So, so there is this idea that if the golf cart thing can work, then it would be up to 16,000 something for both. And if it can't work, we're talking about 49,000? Yeah, we're talking is that kind of that? higher. Um, and, and a majority of that's the labor right, part of it. Right. Um, the, yeah. the, the bikers use it more after five mm -hmm. do it during the summer. Uh, I know five mm -hmm. of my neighbor, neighbors ride bikes and they leave out after dark and it's usually about six or seven that regularly ride from Xenia Avenue up to uh, Enon and then down, mm -hmm. down to Enon heading uh, north. And, they either will cross over and keep going, or they, they'll head back down toward town. So, uh, and, the, and they use the bike path, is uh, what you're saying. Well, no, they use the street. They use the street. Right. Yeah. Um, I would like to see us uh, pursue this because, in terms of even our sidewalks, you know, I was just out in uh, visiting friends in Massachusetts. And most, many of their sidewalks, except right downtown, are asphalt. And I called the, the city to ask, you know, they're thinking about that. And they said it's much less handwork. They've got their own machine because they've got so many miles of sidewalks that are asphalt. Sure. Um, and they've got tons of trees everywhere. So I'm sure they've got some kind of a machine that they're able to kind of, you know, get up. Because he said the biggest money saving is that you don't have to do as much handwork as a, si a standard sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And it's easier to patch too. Yes, it's so, easier to repair it. Yep. So I, so I don't know. I mean, um, trying to find, you know, I think these suggestions of going to the county or play, you know, places that have these kind of pathways and how did they do it? Because part of the good thing about them is that they are cheaper to maintain, to build and maintain, and it's something that may inform, at some point to the future, our what we want to do you know, to be thinking about that relative to sidewalk systems as well. But I, I'd ride, a, I ride that area. They are pretty rough. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, you know, I don't know. As a cyclist myself, I'm not, you know, fast cyclist. I just use it to get from <coughs> A to B. And both along Dayton Street and that street, um, that's a very safe way to be on a bicycle, you know, and especially at night uh, when it's dark. Mm -hmm. but. Um, but anyway, I, I, we, I think we, we should are look just, into I'm it sorry, further. we are just talking about doing the south side, not both sides. Oh, yeah. Right. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the only side. side. <laughs> I, just, right. I just get very, I get very nervous about the narrowness of them. I get very nervous about the trees because if, if there is four feet and that is, that is a tough little passage when you're on a bike and if you're a kid and you're, you know, you're maybe not completely steady. So, um, I'm, I, 
I'm not totally sold on, you know, I'm, I'm definitely sold on something to be safer. I'm not totally sold on kind of a, an ad hoc, not really to current code mm -hmm. um, bike path. It, and it just isn't. I mean, yeah, it just isn't current, current want, standards. Want, yeah, 10 feet is, is kind of the norm. Um, do we have the ability to no, expand no out? Mm -hmm. I think I think what you have about if if we combine the went, sidewalk went with apps and see I think I measured only about eight to nine feet that we'd have on road or off road. Uh, well, what we were looking at is starting at the edge of the old path uh -huh. and then coming onto the street. I think I measured about nine feet between eight and nine feet. Is but, there a sidewalk the would, whole way? No, I'm sorry. Is there a sidewalk the whole There's way? Sidewalk. I mean, it's, it's, so is there that much is there that much interference is there that much dual use why aren't we just talking about letting the kids ride their bikes on the encourage them to ride the bikes on the sidewalk and if the sidewalk needs to be fixed in that area it fix the sidewalk it, it wouldn't be they get a lot of sidewalk traffic now from the walkers because there's no busing anymore so the kids walk to school <laughs> so the walkers are using the sidewalk okay okay it's, it's the bikers that have really nowhere to you know, they have the street. Okay. That's, that's kind of what they're doing now along Dayton Street is using the bikeway and the bike path. Right. Or sorry, sidewalk and the bike right. path because in certain spots the, the bikeway is yeah. almost non existent. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, and why not combine the two? I mean, which trees. is kind of what I've and sort of heard you. Trees. That, is that the issue? Yeah. Trees? Uh, what, what, um, what, Dayton yeah. Street? Yeah, I mean, why can't well, we just no, lead no. over and. Well, Dayton Street would <coughs> probably be easy to combine. Well, it's, we got it's, some drainage. Yeah, it's about the same width, yeah. distance apart, yeah. the sidewalk and the bike path, right. as on uh, South College. South College. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I, what Brian is talking about combining the two, so filling in the space in the middle to make it a wider path and letting both pedestrians and bicycles use it. I don't think that would work on South College because of the trees. Correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The right. trees separate, yeah. separate. Mm -hmm. the sidewalk and the bike bikeway. I mean, it would work on Dayton Street, probably, at least in most places. Yeah. Yes. But it wouldn't work. It wouldn't yeah. work on South College. Yep. So. Yep. Are we working on? I mean, I know South College. It doesn't. That's obviously the only route you can use. But I mean, I, one of the things that the Bike Committee did years and years <laughs> ago was come up with alternate routes to encourage people to not use Xenia Avenue and to not use Dayton Street. To to you know, use limestone, use secondary streets to make it safer so that so that cyclists aren't on um, aren't on the main street. So, I mean, that doesn't address this total issue. But you know, the bike trip, the bike path on Dayton only takes you down a certain distance anyway. So, you know, what we might want to think is how to direct them instead of continuing to go down Dayton Street, maybe go down the side streets. I think that's fine for But yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're used yeah, to and they're narrow. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're used yeah. to the main streets, and that's you know, mom and dad says go down that street. So if something happens, you know, I know where to look for you or something like that. I think that might be something that they thought also. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I did look at you know, right, <coughs> right street as an alternate, but. Right street narrows. It is, yeah, and, and it's a lot of trees, barely, yeah, and you can barely get to. I mean, <coughs> realistically, at this point, Jason, aren't we looking at spring because of asphalt? The asphalt plants closing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. Well, this is good. Um, I definitely feel like we should do something. Um, I guess what I keep thinking about, though, is I want to make sure that we think bigger picture, just about. And I don't know if this is what Karen was suggesting, but you know, I, I hate the idea of just investing in you know these small corridors and not thinking about you know an overall plan that we strive towards. Um, so, and I, mean, I think it's going to need to be a combination. I was going to say um, the practicality is in you know older. I mean, it's you know those trees are beautiful. Nobody would ever want to cut them down. So. Uh, 
we've got the high school there, you know, it's kind of, to me, it's just a practical thing. We're not going to have a standard bikeway there. It's, there's not space. Mm -hmm. And we're not cutting those trees down to make it happen. <laughs> that, would well, no, not, all, that would not work. Yeah, so I, <laughs> well, but um, hopefully not soon, because <laughs> I love them. But, um, but anyway, I just think we need to be kind of practical, too. And to me, that's the practical solution is to fix that. And, it's, and if, we, if we can look a little more, you know, as you've already done some research, a little more research, I wonder, you know, if we can do it getting the machine up there, it's very reasonable then to do it financially. And we might want to use it as part of our sidewalk uh, monies <coughs> in the budget. I, I, I also think we need to, the kids need to learn how to ride the proper way to ride a bicycle and, and to follow the rules and there needs to be some enforcement. And, you know, in, instead of just watching the cars, watch the cyclists for what they're doing. I, you know, it's, I, I, um, I have I I guess if we can do it for a few thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, it's I guess it's okay. You know, it's just a fix, it's something but I would I would like I mean I think it's something the active transportation committee I would like the, them to yes. look at and to consider something more holistic. But but I also think you know I live out there, okay, and the traffic is fast because that's what you have. That is the quickest way to uh, instead of having to go through town mm -hmm. to to get to the south end. And do we and need it, another stop sign? Uh, <laughs> there's really no no. There's place. no yeah. place to put yeah. but, 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 but the What yeah, about speed bumps? Because because what you no, have is it, it's more of the other towners. Speed bumps will stop. Yeah, it's not a speed yeah. Bump. yeah. They're, they're, you know, we have trucks with the trailers, the long more guys. These are the people that are doing the speed. The parents that are taking the kids back and forth to school are, are being safe. They're not passing the kids and so forth. It's the, the out of town traffic. It's, it's where my concern is. I don't think yeah. you're getting a lot of out of town get, traffic. We get, we get a lot of food traffic in the morning. And, and then in the evening, we're going back. So is a stop sign really not a feasible thing on that street? I don't to think there's a way down. I mean, well, there's going. No, there are streets. I mean, there's the street that goes into to your your street, and then there's a street into. Yeah, because we got the three-way stop down right street. Yeah. I mean, it would slow the traffic. I mean, it would slow the traffic down. If we're trying to slow the traffic down, put another stop sign there. If that that seems like a simple way to slow the traffic down, yeah. and maybe people who are in a big hurry won't go down that street because of all. If there's another stop sign, I don't know if the chief could, you guys could think about that. You know, too, the nice thing is you don't have a static popu population. You've got a whole new group of those lawn kids coming in on a regular yeah. basis so you can really change that culture if that's emphasized as this is the route we're fixing it up this is the way you go you tell all the coaches don't let your teams run right down the middle of the dang street right. which is what they presently do you put them on the bike path and you really put that focus on this is the route we use and it's being backed up by law enforcement backed up by the village backed up by we're making it right for you guys I think that culture can turn around. It's because you've got that shifting population. And there kids. can be education too at the yeah. schools. Um, stencil for a Shero, have we found anything out about that? We've, we've actually got one. We have one? Yeah, we got one that uh, actually goes over the um, loops for changing at the, um, at the lights. Okay. So we can use that one, or um, I've got in touch with ODOT. We can use that one. So. So, I mean, if we wanted to do something now, I mean, can we put sharrows down now? You can push sharrows down now, but like Karen was going to say, I, I don't think it's going to promote people to ride on the current bike path. It's, it's oh, right. No, oh, it, would just, no. The it would be for yeah, the yeah, traffic. Yeah. yeah. And, so you uh, can put them out in the street, and that, that's actually what was proposed, but I just didn't want to. Right. And that's a, uh, the those bike. are the little arrows with, that are with the bike mm -hmm. that emphasize that you're sharing the road. 
so the share and then the arrow. We were uh, we were also talking about putting those while we're on Sharrows. Um, on we, Yeah, we had talked to Eric and uh, Eric Oberg and Chris Bongiorno about putting those on a Xenia between um, was it Corey and 343? Is that what we or what, where where were we starting? I think it was going through town. Yeah, all the way downtown. Through. Mm -hmm. it was, think so, it was going through town. So if we were going to do Sharrows, the cost is paint, and then of course your guys' time. Um, you know, time. Oh, okay. Oh, you, you have guys, because yeah, we don't have the we don't yeah. have the ability to do it. Okay. So, and do we know yeah. how much that would? Uh, right now it's about two hundred fifty dollars for the seven Sharrows. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
helping us if there's something we're not thinking about, you know, like what Karen mentioned about Green County Parks and Trail, you know, uh, Parks and Rec, um, and those kinds of things, other options that uh, might be good. Um, but I really like this. I think it's very helpful. So. Me too. Karen, you, you said that there was a bike committee or group that was part of the planning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they, they're on hiatus right now. Okay, I'm good with Folks well, but I think we want to be careful because because um, the active transportation <coughs> committee has you know been kind of actively working on this, and mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we want two committees that are potentially okay. cross purposes. Right. I mean, I think I think we use that slot and that structure, but we should broaden it. I mean, it's not just about bikes, mm -hmm. and, and you know I think that's the you know where this group can help us think more broadly. Um, but I like the idea of using that same slot. I was going to say, I just, uh, I, I think using the expertise of that group seems like a great idea. However, I, I'm wondering if, you know, in terms of, um, you know, like I say, I'm about practical, and I don't, I would not want, I would want the committee to have some sense of, you know, that, that there are cost, you know, <coughs> responsibilities. I would hate to be getting recommendations that, you know, are just going to be unrealistic because. Uh, you know, because in order to meet these standards or whatever, right. and they're not something that we're actually going to be able to act on. So I don't know how to get, I guess you're going to be talking yeah, to them. So I like this, this group working like the fiber advisory group um, that Patty set up with that expertise. And, and again, making sure that that's balanced by, you know, Jason's got the numbers and those, that kind of thing. And, and again, having some recommendations about how we can then execute those solutions. But I agree with you. You know, so I think it should be structured uh, in a more. Yeah, so they're way. not disappointed. They give us all these great recommendations. Right. That cost way out I, of the budget or whatever. I agree. I think or, we need to be practical. Look at what we have, and then okay. see if we can cut costs or do things smarter. Cool. That's good. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. And thank you, Sergeant Watson. I have to keep saying that so I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, more announcements. I probably don't need to tell anybody in Yellow Springs what tomorrow is. If you haven't already voted, um, I hope <coughs> that the lines tomorrow aren't as long as they've apparently been at Greene County Board of Elections. Or um, actually, maybe we hope they are. Right? Well, it depends on, on how patient voting, everybody not, is. Not three hour wait, well. Yeah. <laughs> what, what time do the polls open? Six thirty, okay. and they close at seven thirty. Um, I, I have an announcement. I, I'd like to make an acknowledgement to um, Brian. <laughs> you. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. um, I think this national election is everyone's focus. And it's making me realize how much goes on beside, outside of our little village. So I want to acknowledge Brian for being willing to step into that ring <laughs> for his courage, his... Uh, his dedication, the time that he spent running for the Ohio House of Representatives. And I just appreciate that you're doing that. Yeah, I think you're a, real, a great model, certainly for me, who doesn't really want to reach outside this little venue to, to that. Thank you. Thanks. He's been doing a great job. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and one other piece I wanted to mention about the election tomorrow is that um, there is a levy for uh, Green Memorial Hospital on. It's a 0.5 mil levy. It's a renewal. And just in addition to services that's, that are provided at the hospital itself, um, funding from that levy also helps to support our um, uh, clinic up at community, up at, at 88. 888 Dayton Street, the Community Physicians Rural Clinic. So um, it does impact Yellow Springs directly. Do you want to mention Art and Soul? Mm -hmm. um, yes, Art and Soul is the 19th. Is it the 19th? Yep. Uh, Saturday the 19th. It is a uh, great little um, art show that is organized by uh, Lisa Goldberg, and it's at Mills Lawn from 10 to 5. Mm -hmm. and. There are 31 artists, um, a lot of them local, um, a, a lot from around the region. So you'll see some familiar faces and some familiar art, but a lot of really exciting things. So it's time to do your uh, 
start holiday shopping. Yeah. Um, in terms of the election, just to go back there a minute, I just wanted to give a number out for <clears throat> if people have any problems uh, casting their vote. Um, the um, Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, um, I think, are behind this uh, this effort called Election Protection, and there's a phone number that people can call if, if they would have any questions or concerns when they go to the polls. And the number is 866-OUR-VOTE, O-U-R-V-O-T-E. And just as a reminder, the precinct is at Antioch University Midwest. All Yellow Springs voters will vote out there. Um, go in the main door, which is the door closest in the back parking lot. It's the door closest to, to Dayton Yellow Springs Road, and you'll just follow the hallway back. It's pretty easy to find. Um, we also uh, got <clears throat> an announcement from the Greene County Auditor that uh, there will be appraisers uh, in the county, including the village. And uh, I won't go through the details, but we do have details about their cars and license plates and all that, but they are going to be appraising property. Yeah. Um, I also just wanted to uh, follow up. We had the, uh, the Vita uh, presentation to Katie Seidel and Beth Holyoke, and that was really awesome. And personally, I really like the traveling trophy, the Y, next to the spring sign. Oh, I think it cool. looks very cool. Uh, and uh, again, that was designed for us by John Hudson, so really nice piece. Um, and there were, were a couple other things that I want to mention, maybe different kinds of announcements. I sort of forgot to mention that the day after our last meeting, I went to present at the Broadband Communities Conference in Minneapolis. Uh, I was asked to do that by Next Century Cities that we joined two and a half years ago. And uh, it was a, uh, a, a local elected officials panel about political leadership related to fiber builds. So a couple great things about that. One is I got to see a fiber deployment um, and see how it looks in a community and there's some great things going on. The other thing I learned is a lot of communities are doing this. They're often making it a regional collaboration, um, which is something for us to think about. And uh, they're not getting a lot of pushback from the majors. These what's, are successful. What's a fiber deployment? Uh, so basically putting out that fiber for like the. In the act of putting yeah, it up. Right. Putting it up. And they have different ways. You know, you can bury it if, you, if aesthetics are important. They show just different ways to do that. Um, and I also met someone that uh, was intimately involved in the Lebanon uh, project or debacle. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a lot of insight about why that went wrong and are happy to talk to us. So some great resources. And the other thing that made me feel good is some of these other communities have been at it for four plus years before they made it happen. Um, and the timeline that Judy put together for me showed that we've been doing it for two years and I think we're uh, you know, making some progress. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I also wanted to mention we have an opportunity, uh, and I've talked to Mary Ann and uh, the Beaver Management Group about this, and we'll have more information, I think, at the next meeting, uh, to have the Professional Trail Builders Association do a boardwalk project, uh, potentially at the Glass Farm, which I think could solve a problem. But an alternative that Patty and Jason thought of is uh, Ellis Pond. Um, but I guess the bottom line is they've selected Yellow Springs, would love to do this project. The upside for us is that all of their time design engineering is free. Uh, we would have to come up with covering the cost for materials. Um, but I just wanted to put it out there and, and say that I will bring something more formal uh, at our next meeting. And Patty and Jason are going to be talking to them as well to understand it from the village end. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and the last thing, because it's not on the agenda, the Economic Sustainability Commission does have a plan for a CBE forum. And uh, I think it's a good one following what we did with the local policing forum. And uh, that will be another thing that uh, we should be able to talk about um, probably our first meeting in December. And, uh, and get that going. But I did want to let the community know that we, that that commission is on top of that recommendation. Very good, any other announcements? 
I, I just wanted to announce the uh, forum that the Justice System Task Force is doing on November 17th at 7 p.m. here at the Bryan Center. Um, Ellis has uh, talked to his uh, friend Thomas Hagel, who's a professor emeritus at the University of Dayton Law School. Um, he's an acting judge for the Dayton Municipal Court and a commissioner on the Montgomery County Veterans Service Commission. And he's uh, practiced and published in the field of criminal practice and procedure, regularly lectures uh, in the state of Ohio. He will be addressing constitutional uh, and statutory framework that governs courts and the police. So it's kind of a ba background uh, this, uh, information that will be helpful for the work of the task force. The public is going to be invited, definitely, and so we urge people to come and attend. And is that rooms A and B? You know, we didn't. Did, where's uh, Judy? I'm thinking it'll probably be rooms A and B. Okay. Yeah. We didn't. We didn't name a place. Yeah. But so we probably should. There's time to do that yet. In yeah. The announcement, so yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah. And um, we are going to film it as well, so if people can't make it to the event. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Uh, next item is the consent agenda. We have the minutes of October 17th. Um, can I get a motion for so approval? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Uh, review of the agenda. Um, Brian just mentioned, and it, it totally passed. I thought we, we were going to have a short item about um, uh, the discussion on the CBE, but I don't think we need to based upon what you just said. I think we can just leave that off. Um, so anything else that we need to add to the agenda? Yes, I have uh, a request uh, to council <coughs> to pay for materials to put in a flow device on the channel <coughs> leading into the glass farm that is not on village property. Um, is that something you can talk about in your I've is that something you're aware of? Yeah, uh, I talked to Patty well, about Okay, it. we'll just yeah, put it under old business. Yeah. Um, and are we talking about the Indigenous Peoples Day resolution? Oh, thank, thank you for bringing that up. Um, I put a draft in our packet just so council could see it, and I neglected to make one addition, which Judy had suggested and uh, I, I think is appropriate. So. The, the draft should read, everywhere where it says village, uh, where the whereas is, should say village council of Yellow Springs. So right now it says the village of Yellow Springs recognizes blah, blah, blah. So it should say the village council of Yellow Springs it, in all those places. So that, that would be the only difference. Okay. So and well, should we put that on the agenda, or are we going to for, for next tonight? meeting? Next meeting, okay. So th this is just so people can see it. So if you have any things you would like changed, or that one typo that I yeah I out did to change. You did not. Well, I get okay. I guess I didn't send Judy, Judy the correct uh, copy. I was. But I do have that. Wait, I, I have a question. Is this going to yes. be on the agenda for discussion or as an actual resolution at the next meeting? Well, why don't we discuss it a minute? I, I don't know. I, I, thought, I think was, we should discuss it. I thought it, it was minute. on as a resolution for the next meeting because the discussion, I mean, you had said bring it as a resolution when you had the presentation. <coughs> So, th okay. I mean, that's how I've got it in future agenda items. Obviously, you can do what you, you will, but that was initially what you had thought you would do. Okay. If everybody's comfortable with that, that's fine. That works for me. Mm -hmm. I wondered if uh, Patty should announce at this time the, the news on the CBE. Well, well, so yes. are we done with this draft thing? Just on the two. Yeah. Okay. I just think it's a big announcement. <laughs> so doing it at the end of the meeting seems yeah. kind of. Um, what Judith is referring to is the fact that last Friday afternoon we held the closing <coughs> on the property um, formerly known as the CBE. I'm not sure what we're going to call it now. But um, we closed on that property last Friday afternoon and I believe that uh, Barb Zappi from Chris's office headed straight down to the recorder's office in Greene County to get that recorded. So, so the village is now the owner. Mm -hmm. Officially full and clear. <coughs> yes, I don't know. So, thank you. All right. For and thanks to the folks 
um, from community resources who mm -hmm. saw that through. I know yes. uh, Dino Pilata especially um, was um, was the connection on that one, was the, the person that Patty was working with on that. Uh, do you want to review the petitions and Yeah, so so we've we've hit on several of them. Um, the uh, draft resolution, uh, the guest speaker for the Justice System Task Force, mm -hmm. uh, and we also had in the packet the mayor's monthly report, um, uh, business as usual. Uh, and there were a couple, I think, really important things that were in the online packet. Uh, two of them were from Greene County Public Health, one about the uh, Five to Drive campaign to help parents protect teen drivers. And just really quickly, I wanted to mention the five things that they emphasize, because I think it's good knowledge. No drinking and driving, uh, buckle up every trip, every time, every one, eyes on the road, hands on the wheel all the time, stop speeding before it stops you, and no more than one passenger at a time, uh, because it distracts teenagers. Uh, so good information and they're going to be uh, uh, basically uh, disseminating this uh, to parents to talk to their youth. Uh, the other thing that we got was a update on um, sort of I guess car accidents and the upshot was that uh, there hasn't been much change from 2015 to 2016 um, but uh, there are some uh, major contributors, uh, such as going left of center. So there are some common things that are causing these accidents in Greene County. So I, I thought it was very good information. Uh, NAMI also submitted something about their third Thursday series, and they're gonna have Tim Callahan uh, talk about um, uh, uh, social, emotional, and behavioral needs for students. And this is on November 17th at 7 p.m. And a very important one from the uh, Mental Health and Recovery Board. They're having a community drug forum, and it's about solutions for preventing and treating the disease of substance disorders. That is uh, already passed. So, all right, but uh, be good to follow up on that. And I actually was in a meeting today um, with um, Mike Turner. Um, and um, the mayors from the region and the Greene County mayors actually have a pretty active group that are that's dealing with the drug situation right now and um, we're looking at the possibility of Yellow Springs joining that uh, okay we're moving on to public hearings and legislation uh, first reading of ordinance 2016-26 we can read this in by title only, Judy yeah, this is repealing Chapter 238, Treasurer of the Codified Ordinances of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, and enacting a new Chapter 238, Treasurer. Thank you. Um, can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Uh, Patty or Melissa? Um, well, Rachel? Melissa, yeah. Melissa and I have been working with Rachel McKinley, who is our, our treasurer. She's here in the audience um, tonight. So, Rachel, if you'd like to come up and explain the changes that you've made to the policy. Uh, <coughs> Rachel's been updating and uh, revamping our investment policies to make it more compliant and um, a better document for the village overall. Yeah, this hadn't been updated since 1999. And I thought I went recently to uh, the uh, Center for uh, Public the, the uh, CPIM Center for Public Investors, whatever. Um, and it's a seminar I have to go to every year, put on by the state. And uh, they had this document there as a template. And so I kind of merged this along with our old document, came up with a new version that I think is a little easier to read, mm -hmm. to understand, make sure that everything that's been recently enacted is in, in this document. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and then we are working on uh, some changes uh, as well, but um, I don't really, I guess that's not on the agenda for tonight, but uh, as far as our investments, yeah, as far as the investments for the village, uh, but this is sort of the first <laughs> part of enacting all that. I thought we need to rewrite the, uh, um, and update the investment policy. Mm -hmm. Can you just give a broad brush of the 
changes, the major changes? Uh, I, I would, except I don't think I have the piece of paper that I wrote all the notes on. Here, let me. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so, uh, again, I was, I was using uh, the template or document that was um, recommended in this meeting. Uh, it's uh, from the Government Finance Officers Association. It's a sample investment policy. Um, and I felt like it was more comprehensive and descriptive than the previous investment policy that we had. Uh, I believe I included the old one in here as well. Or, um, and um, some of the sections that we added uh, were scope. Uh, it more explicitly defines the activities and funds which the policy is applicable to. Uh, standards of care. Um, in addition, uh, this section, uh, I'll just read it, uh, provides more guidance and detail in defining the standard of prudence to be used by investment officials and details the delegation of authority. Um, also added uh, section six, safekeeping and custody, um, which details how you track the securities, what in information you need to keep on them. Um, in under permissible investments, uh, this was a section we already had, but it did not include uh, the Star Plus program, which is in addition to Star Ohio, you've got Star Plus. These are both programs that are administered by the treasurer of the state. Um, and, and those are in the code as a, li of a list of permissible investments for municipalities and governmental organizations. And is that what we just shifted over to? Or, no, or we actually shifted from there. To, to Star honest, Ohio, yeah. Yeah. yeah <coughs> um, so these are two funds, um, the Star Ohio, Star Plus. There are some differences in the types of investments. Both are in, um, in the Ohio Revised Code, both are deemed as investments that municipalities can automatically be uh, okay, you know, according to the state and auditors, they're okay to invest in these. Um, you, in fact, the treasurers or, or, or whoever's in charge of doing the investments doesn't have to get the, the uh, additional training that I do go to anyway, but um, you're not required to go to that training if the, that and checking accounts are the only thing you have. Um, but I find that going there provides a lot of useful information, so I've always gone. So the Star Plus program was um, implemented, I'm going to say about maybe four or five years ago, in addition to Star Ohio. Star Plus, the big difference from your perspective, I suppose, would be that <clears throat> Star Plus is FDIC insured, where Star Ohio isn't. Um, uh, so Star Plus was, for a while, outperforming Star Ohio, which is the sort of original fund that the state put together for municipalities and other uh, governmental organizations. And so we moved from Star Ohio into Star Plus. And then this year, Star Ohio was outperforming Star Plus. So now we have recently moved the money back. So we've kind of done a back and forth, which is mm -hmm. typical of other uh, groups in Ohio. Everybody's chasing the, the returns. Right now, Star Plus is at 0.65% return or 65 basis points. Star Ohio, I think, is at 40 basis points. Or I'm sorry, reverse. Star Ohio is at 65 basis points. Star Plus is at 40 basis points. It used to be kind of reversed, where Star Plus was outperforming Star Ohio. But that's not the case anymore. Um, so in this, um, the other thing that we added besides adding the star plus to our list of permissible investments, um, which frankly probably should have done that a long time ago since we were already in it, but <laughs> we also 
like I say, that we also refer to the Ohio Revised Code, and it's in that. So I don't feel like we're really mm -hmm. in jeopardy of any rule breaking. Um, but and it's Rachel, nice to have it written down. Right. And why aren't we worried about FDIC for Star Ohio? Well, Star Ohio, yeah, good question. Um, Star Ohio is made up of a lot of different bonds, mostly agencies. Um, they're very limited in what they can invest in. They do have some commercial paper, different treasury bonds, agency bonds, um, CDs. Um, but because and, and so, therefore, the state has deemed that these are appropriate investments, and they've basically put their good name behind their fund. That, I would say, is why you shouldn't be concerned, because the state of Ohio is basically, and the treasurer, um, is basically saying, this stuff is, is, is fine for you all to be in. Now, that being said, it is not FDIC insured. Um, but, you know, I guess it's never been FDIC insured. Um, a ton of people have, you know, I mean, we're in good company because every other governmental organization practically is in this fund in the state of Ohio. So um, I guess that's why I, I don't worry about it too much. Um, we are not required to have FDIC insured funds for everything. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, um, FDIC insured funds are performing very poorly because of the collateral, rule, the rules for collateralization on banks since, uh, you know, the, the, the crash. Uh, there's a lot of restrictions on banks and collateralizing and, and insuring for FDIC. Um, so the returns are just really poor. Hmm. Um, so anyway, uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, okay. definitely. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and then the, uh, I also added a performance standards and evaluation uh, section, uh, section 15. And, and uh, this section provides a benchmark for per, uh, measuring performance or rate of return. So those are the things that really have changed in our investment policy. Um, like I say, I think the, the <coughs> policy itself is just a lot easier to read, um, is a lot more comprehensive um, than what we had before. And, um, you know, not that what we had before was poor or anything, but I think it was just time to update it and uh, revisit that. Uh, we'll be using this then to guide our investment decisions going forward and uh, like I say Patty and Melissa and I have been working on securing um, some more options for us so that we can uh, maybe make our work, money work a little harder uh, sounds good yeah just one other quick question um, under permissible permissible investments um, it mentioned some different uh, federal groups that we could invest in so could the uh, the Yellow Springs Credit Union, would that fall into, I guess, number two? Um, I don't know that uh, the credit union has the correct kind of investments that, um, let's see. They don't do business banking. Yeah, I don't know. I can check it, check, right. check it out, but. Okay. Um, my understanding is that um, most of what the credit unions do do not fall within the permissible investment options. But I could, you know, I could do a little more. I mean, when I've talked to other people, they're like, "Oh yeah, credit unions. We can't use credit unions." Now, have I do dove deep into why? No, I okay. haven't. <laughs> Okay, let's, uh, um, any other questions? Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Sims? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Housh? Yes. Humphrey? 
Yes. Winthrop. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Um, I think for this, since we've got two reading, oh no, this is our only reading the budget, right? This is no. an emergency? No, you will do two readings. We'll do two readings, so I think we can read it in by title only. We'll read it in in full um, for the second reading. So is that okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Judy? Yeah, this is uh, Ordinance 2016-27, approving the 2017 annual appropriations and declaring an emergency for the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Melissa? So what you have before you is the uh, ordinance format of the 2017 budget. Um, I had uh, as attachments the finalized versions that were reviewed at the last meeting of all of the budgets. Um, so that will include the general fund, the special revenue funds, capital projects and debt service funds, as well as the enterprise funds. And I also put the uh, capital budget in there as well. So all of the figures that are in the ordinance tie to the uh, last version of the budget that we reviewed, which I don't believe there were any changes as of the last meeting. Um, so everything should be as it was that we reviewed the last time. So if you'd like for me to go through any of the figures or um, anything, uh, the total appropriations for this ordinance of all funds are $9,586,445, which is uh, one of the lowest budgets to date since I have been hired. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any questions, Council? Uh, well, I guess I'm just wondering about uh, the on the ordinance itself, the human relations line yeah. Is that supposed to be council commissions now? That is council commissions. I used the old um, ordinance format, okay. so yeah. I will definitely change that. Thank you, Judy. I didn't. I didn't even catch that. I got the amount right, but mislabeled the name. Yeah, and not that it matters, but on your uh, uh, spreadsheet. Um, it does say council commissions at the top, but then the uh, at the total bottom line. it still says yeah. that. Yeah. And that was pointed out last time, and I slipped through the cracks on me. Well, it's not like you haven't had anything on your mind. <laughs> yeah. so. and, and change my name to, to Juro from Jury. <laughs> so um, I could say that. I had, um, I had asked about a pie chart to be included. Um, for the general fund, just because I feel like it's easy for mm -hmm. um, citizens to really be able to see what's happening with that budget, which I think is of particular interest. So I don't know if you. I did not do that. Was that just for the general fund or just all appropriations gen. with all of the various funds? I could do one with all of the funds um, as it relates to the total in the ordinance, and then I could do a separate one maybe for the enterprise funds and a separate one from the, for the general fund that shows the different departments? Or is that too much detail? Well, why don't you just go ahead and do that, and then if yeah, it's, that e if it's easy good. enough, I, yeah, I just I include think, that you next know, just, time. Yeah, okay. I think it's an easy way for people, you know, who don't want to get into all the detail, mm -hmm. but to just have a general understanding so of. are you talking about expenses or revenue, too? Actually, both. Both, one for oh, revenues yeah. and one for useful. expenses? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think it's uh, just a way to make it a little easier for, you know. But the budget is for just citizens, for, for citizens to understand the, a little bit. But better. the budget is just for expenses. Well, it gives the revenue. It's, it's good to know where the money's coming from, too. Yeah. I can certainly But particularly, do that. I think the general fund is of particular interest. It's the thing we've talked about with our levies and so on. I think it's good to keep citizens abreast of how the money's Any other spent. comments or questions? Citizens, comments or questions? Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Hempfling? Yes. Housh? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. <coughs> Uh, ordinance 2016-28 will do title only. This is repealing section 242.01 composition classification of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio and enacting a new section 242.01 composition classification. Can I get a motion please? So moved. Second. Um, 
Patty, are you going to explain this one? I will. Um, this is the ordinance that we discussed um, last time. Currently, the administrative code says that the command staff of the police department will be comprised of the chief, uh, a captain, and two sergeants. Um, and we prefer, um, especially at this time, to have three sergeants instead of a captain and two sergeants. Um, so this actually changes the readings in the um, administrative code so that we're able to have um, all three sergeants or a captain and two sergeants, however the need may be. Right now our plan is for three sergeants um, to help cover weekend supervision um, and also um, to help better supervise the troops and have consistency in the, the message that's delivered to the to troops. There was a little bit of confusion. Um, I think one thing that some people did not understand is that we're actually, um, Chief is actually giving up a full-time position um, in this. Uh, currently, the staffing in the police department is 10 full-time officers. Um, we are partially financing this by uh, reducing that staffing to nine full-time officers. There will be a substantial savings to the department um, in the personnel costs of around $79,000, dollars dollars a year. Um, by doing this, <coughs> the staffing will be adequate. Um, Chief has looked at it. He's looked at all the different schedules and feels confident that it will still provide adequate staffing, but at the same time provide better supervision. Thank you. Any comments or questions from council? Any comments or questions from citizens? Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Sims? Yes. Hempfling? Yes. Housh? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Uh, same title only for 2016-29. This is repealing section 252.01 personnel classification of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, and enacting new section 252.01 personnel classification. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Um, okay. At the same time that the administrative code provides for um, a captain and two sergeants, it also provides for sergeants to be paid at 3% above um, the highest road patrol officer. Chief has proposed that um, sergeants be paid at 8% above the highest paid road patrol officer and that should a captain ever be um, needed, the captain would be paid at 8% above the sergeant's pay. Um, again, this, this will be more than made up for by the savings that we're realizing in um, decreasing the total number of full-time officers. Um, this is actually where the little bit that we will be using of that approximately $85,000 a year that it takes to, to put an officer on the road, um, this is where we're reducing that down to 79 by making these increases in the pay differential for the supervisory staff. Okay. So. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Citizens' comments and questions? Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes, McQueen. Yes. Hempfling. Yes. Couch. Yes. Sims. Yes. Wintrow. Yes. Uh, next is 2016-30. Right. This is authorizing the funding of a part-time station manager position for the community access channel of Yellow Springs. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Um, Patty. <laughs> Um, so this is the um, ordinance that we talked about um, at the last meeting. Susan's position, she's currently an independent contractor. Um, some things have changed about the law. We cannot have her as an independent contractor anymore. So we need to make her a part-time employee. Her um, hours of work, her duties are going to stay exactly the same as they are now. It's just that she will become a a, an actual part-time employee of the village uh, as opposed to being an independent contractor. Okay, thank you. And we are happy to have her. Any mm -hmm. comments or questions from council? Great. Citizens? Yes, welcome aboard, mm -hmm. officially, mm -hmm. yes. Um, all those in favor, oh, this is an ordinance. Judy, yeah. would you please call the roll? Yes, Housh. Yes. McQueen? Yes. Templing. 
Yes. Sims? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank 2016 you. 2016-32. Uh, actually, this is 2016-31 repealing section 1248.03. Oh, that's right. Okay. Spatial requirements of the codified ordinances of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, and enacting a new section 1248.03 spatial requirements. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Sounds like Denise. Mm -hmm. Issue. <coughs> Which one is this? Uh, the spatial 31. requirements. 31. So I get for the dimensional requirements? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, this uh, came up when uh, residents who were getting ready to build a pro on a property on Quarry Street um, uh, needed to come to BZA for a variance to the side yard um, setback. What they, when they came, what their, what their rationale was is that the zoning code, the 2013 passage of the zoning code, Code made that um, side yard setback for a lot of the properties uh, that had houses on them in residential A <clears throat> were now actually non-conforming um, because the uh, prior to that the side yard setback was 10 feet on both sides and <clears throat> after looking at past um, going back in the zoning codes prior to that um, also talking uh, with members of BZA that were part of the technical review committee and also researching minutes um, from the, the planning commission meeting and council meeting and the technical review committee when they were meeting with planning commission, I couldn't find anywhere in there where they actually made that change to 25 feet. It just doesn't seem to, no. it jumps kind of, yeah. So again, mm -hmm. they thought that was a text um, uh, oversight. Um, just want to straighten that out. Okay. Thank you. Um, <coughs> any comments or questions? Anything, um, Jerry, you want to add from Planning Commission? Uh, no. Okay. That needs to be a good um, Comments or questions from citizens? Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Howell? Yes. Howell? Yes. 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 2016-32. This is repealing section 1224.01 application fee of the codified <coughs> ordinances of the, the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, and enacting new section 1224.01 application fee. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Uh, Patty. Or Denise, I guess. Uh, the, Denise. The, fee, the fee schedule in the zoning code um, had been updated in May of 2015, and this was simply an oversight um, on the part of staff for not noticing that there was section 1224.01 for the application fee for right-of-way vacations also <clears throat> uh, should have been updated as well. So a way to get around that in the future is um, just to take out the actual dollar amount and just put in instead as established by Village Council. So that way we only need to change the, the actual fee schedule in the future. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other comments or questions? Council, citizens? Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Sims? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Hempling? Yes. Housh? Yes. Wintra? Yes. And finally, lots of legislation tonight. Resolution 2015-56. This is amending Resolution 2016-52 regarding an amendment to lease agreement with Stony Creek Garden Center for village-owned property located at 4550 U.S. 68 North. Can I get a motion? So move. Second. Okay. Patty? So in section one there where it uh, talks about the amount of rent to be paid by Stony Creek Garden Center, um, the resolution that we passed at the last meeting said $500 and they pay $750 a month. So we wanted to update that um, to reflect the correct amount. Um, that is the only change between what you passed at the last meeting extending the lease okay. and what you've passed at this meeting. Okay, sounds good. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, now is the time in the agenda where we hear from citizens about um, items that are not on the agenda. Um, you have three minutes and you can come up to the podium and speak and state your name. 
Wayne? <laughs> okay, you're the only one here yeah. that might have something to say. <laughs> you don't want to make a little campaign speech? <laughs> Come on, Wayne. <laughs> Um, Those daggone election parties. Yeah. So <laughs> it looks like we, we don't have any citizen concerns. Um, we did add a small piece of old business um, from Marianne about a Beaver Flow device. Yes. Um, so there's the channel that feeds the glass farm that um, comes under Dayton Street and then runs past Baptist Church and Thistle Creek and the properties to the west side. In that channel, there are two dams, along with a lot of debris. But one dam is uh, on the property owned by Thistle Creek. The other dam is actually on the glass farm. The simplest way, well, and, and the dam, both dams together have raised the water level four to five feet above the wetlands at the glass farm. Mm -hmm. So this has created some problems. One, apparently, it's creating stormwater issues that are in the areas being served by that channel. Um, another is just some safety concerns about having water that deep. So the simplest way to keep the water level lower is by putting in flow devices that sort of similar to what's already at the at the glass farm, but simpler, just a pipe. That'll go through the dam, be protected on both sides so that animals and beavers and material don't plug up the pipe. So the beaver management team is getting ready to put in a flow device in both dams. Our grant will pay for the one flow device because it's on the glass farm. The grant won't pay for the flow device that's on private property so in talking to Patty, she said that I would need to come to council to get permission to pay for those materials, which we estimate to be between $200 and $250. And the property owner has given permission? We're in the process of verifying that, and we want, would not do that until that's done. <laughs> and I would, I would also add, Marianne, in addition to the concerns that you noted, there's also the concern of more standing water that is um, attracting more mosquitoes and a, a health hazard in that way as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, is this just going to be an issue that continues to the flow move device? Along? The flow device, I mean, presumably will allow the water to flow. Okay. There is, as I said, debris all up and down that channel. By debris, I mean fallen trees and brush. Mm -hmm. That's going to take, well, and it's on private property. So that's going to take more work both to figure out how to get rid of it. Th that has nothing to do really with the beavers. It's just stuff that's fallen in there over the years. Mm -hmm. But it would be good to get that out and I, we will try to look at that. But that's a longer term, that's a longer term effort and cost. And how, how are things going um, upstream, downstream, through, on the, in the, in the regular stream that's going up like uh, back up through Northwood um, how are things fine. running flowing fine. there yeah, it's fine. Fine. Okay. Yeah. And, and this actually first started coming to light um, when Denise started looking at some of the home ink plans um, for the lot at Dayton and King Street um, and she was speaking with Jason who then said um, that our storm water drains there have far more water in them than they would normally have. And this has been attributed to the backup that's coming off of that part of the, the stream going into the glass farm. So, okay. so, so my request is uh, to, for the village to pay for the materials. Is that estimated between so do, you want, do you want to make a motion to that effect? Yes. Uh, I move that uh, the village pay for the materials for the one flow device uh, on the private property in the Yellow Springs Creek upstream of the glass farm. Given permission by the? Given permission by the property, property. owner. Is there a second? Second. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Um, we have no new business. Um, manager's report. All right, lots of fun stuff happening. Um, I continue to meet with Professor Brenda Craner um, to uh, work towards the leadership sessions. One thing that she did ask, um, she does want to schedule some sessions with council as, as your part of the team building effort that we're doing. Um, it will be one or two sessions, two hours each, and you will need to go into executive session because they, you will be discussing personnel matters. Um, so please look at your dates for November and December and potentially even January that you would be available on a non-council night. Um, can, can somebody manage that, Judy or sure. Patty? Mm -hmm. Somebody manage <coughs> sending out, putting some dates together and sending them out to us, please. Okay. Um, the five, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Did you finish with that? Uh -huh. um, how many times have you met with Brenda? Um, I've met with her once and I am meeting with her again tomorrow. Um, so the plan is for she and I to continue to meet um, probably every two weeks for quite some time. And then um, we also are trying to come up with some good dates for um, the rest of the staff to do their part of it. Um, although we do really want to wait for the third sergeant to get on board. So it will probably be January, which I think staff is so busy right now, they're probably really happy that <laughs> it's not going to be until January anyway. So. And um, holidays I, and everything. Yeah, too. I think Chief is actually starting to uh, to work, you know, get his test ready for the sergeants and all of that. So um, once we get that person on board, then we'll we'll immediately start with the staff training. Okay. So um, and it should all be going simultaneously, <coughs> um, so that we'll finish up February ish okay. sometime in there. Um, Jack Madam, who is our uh, consultant from Design 9, was in town Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of last week. And he met with numerous groups of stakeholders um, as far as the fiber needs assessment that council um, contracted with Design 9 to, to, um, to have them perform. They'll be putting together a web-based survey, and it once this web-based survey is um, complete and available, it will be extremely important for everyone in the village to please go online and answer this web-based survey. Even if you are not interested in the fiber services, if you are interested in the fiber services, what they may be, what you would be willing to pay, this gives us um, the data set from which council will be making a decision on whether to expend this money or not, whether to move forward with the fiber, uh, the, the fiber um, utility or not. So it is extremely important that everyone answer this survey and you will be able to submit one answer per address, one survey per address. So if you live in the village but you also own a business in the village, you will um, actually complete the survey twice, once for your home and once for your business. But please, everyone, once we start advertising that this survey is available on Facebook, at council meetings, on the website, um, as widely as possible, utility we'll ask bills. the news to mm -hmm. put it in. We'll have it on the utility bills. Susan is pointing to herself because she will have it on <coughs> Channel 5. Um, it is very important that everyone complete this survey. Um, so we do very much appreciate your participation in that. Did, uh, uh, did Jack have a chance to meet with uh, any owners of home-based businesses? Yes, he did. He um, Actually, we tried to have a, a, a special meeting for them. Um, we had two people come to that, but there were also a couple of other home-based businesses that attended other sessions okay. um, that he met with. So, um, As was announced earlier, um, we closed on the property at Daniela Springs Road um, earlier, well, late last week. So uh, that is now owned by the village. Um, Sutton Farm Farmhouse. So we had it um, assessed for whether it had some asbestos in it or not. We got back the results. We had to take, believe it or not, just a little bit of old drywall tape out. Um, that has been remediated. And the fire department is really anxious to make that a training burn. Um, so if council is um, 
is agreeable to that. I'm not sure exactly when they were do, would do it, but when I approached uh, Chief Altman about it, he said, I have been waiting to burn that thing for 15 <laughs> years. Can so we get a motion? So move that we burn it. Or allow, you, I'm sorry, that we move. allowed it. The uh, police department. The, Miami the Township. fire department, Miami Township. Yeah, Township. we don't want so, Chief burning it. Yeah, yeah. That we allow Miami Township to uh, use uh, <laughs> the old Sutton building as a burning training exercise. Do we have a second? Uh, I'll second. Do we have discussion? I feel sad. <laughs> Well, um, Mary Ann, you will probably feel less sad if you want to go inside that <laughs> building because I'll be oh, Well, I mean, you know, I'm just sad that it's been left to deteriorate. Too. Yeah, well, that I agree wholeheartedly <coughs> with, but. It is what it is. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Are we? All those, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and the last thing has been a continuing uh, notice for the last couple of months that the <coughs> Planning and Zoning Office will be closed for most of the month of December as Denise takes some well-deserved vacation over the holidays. Thank you. Melissa? I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, basically getting ready um, as we are wrapping up the 2017 budget process for the end of the year now. now um, next on my agenda um, in the the audit that will follow shortly thereafter. And um, just speaking of budget, if anybody has any feedback as to how I might be able to improve uh, the budget process or the presentation, just let me know. That's it. You did a great job. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. You did a great job. Yes, you those pie charts. Yes. Yes. Remember those pie charts? <laughs> it's written down. Mm -hmm. um, I could. Judy? <laughs> um, business as usual, still going away on the public records request because the downside of those things is you have to put the stuff all back afterwards, <laughs> which is sort of a, sort of a bummer. Um, uh, Board of Zoning Appeals has two hearings to deliberate and they will be meeting on November 28th uh, for that meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, future agenda items, are all of these things really on the November 21st agenda? Mm -hmm. Well, I actually have two more to add. <coughs> So, well, most of them are second readings. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the Columbus or the, the Indigenous Peoples Day. Mm -hmm. um, will you, okay, November 21, do you think you will be ready? You said for the November meeting for the CBE, um, Economic Sustainability Commission. Um, we could be. Uh, I guess technically we should probably have uh, another meeting okay. to confirm so that. So then let's so just, we have nothing for the first, what's the first, what's the fifth. date of the first meeting in December? The 5th. Okay, so we'll just put that at December 5th. Sounds good. Um, what were the other two things you had added? Um, the actual um, solar power purchase agreement um, with AEP as well as the easement that grants them the right to build the array <coughs> on the easement that we gave ourselves for utility. Mm -hmm. So okay, and I really want to have those by. And that's a uh, what is that a resolution? They're both ordinances. Okay. And so uh, Chris has worked, promised me that he will work diligently to get those. To so me. we'll do. So we'll have an opportunity for two readings. Okay. Yes. So what's the time frame now? I honestly have no <coughs> idea because we've had we've had to go back and forth with them on a couple of the provisions for the PPA, and so. Um, I really don't want to hazard a guess on that right now because I just want to get this actually approved by everybody in the process. Um, and I think we're, we're on that home stretch now, um, but Chris needs to do complete his review. Um, Chris. And, and then I have to send it to, back to them to make sure that they accept what we're saying, which I don't foresee it as being a problem, but if the weather holds, it's, it's like the infrastructure on Dayton Yellow Springs. If the weather holds, they can get it in right away. Awesome. Okay. Um, I have another agenda item. Um, Wait. A, okay. Go ahead. She had another one. Let, let Patty oh, finish. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Well, I just I had the solar PPA and the solar easement. They're actually two okay. different pieces oh, okay. of legislation. And I did also want to say um, that um, since we're talking about the glass farm, I did order the geotechnical analysis, and that um, I have some preliminary results, but I expect the full written report to be in by the end of next week, so that should be in your next packet. Okay. Mary Ann, sorry. Yeah, uh, Jerry and I will have a sidewalk report recommendation 
uh, which could come to the next meeting or if you think there's not time. Oh, I think, oh, I mean, these, these, this, this legislation will go very quickly. It's all second reading and, and nothing that we really talked about much. Okay. Um, I would like to seriously think as we look at this agenda, um, I would like to seriously think about the possibility of canceling um, our second meeting in December. Yeah. I mean, it's looking like we can. So, Patty, if, if Patty and Judy, if you all will kind of track what is coming up and mm -hmm. see if we can... Um, we can do that? Yes. I'm sure you would all be upset by that. It, it'll <coughs> break my heart, but we'll work on it. Uh, Karen, I, I'm, I'm going to be um, for the first meeting in January bringing a resolution uh, to uh, honor the uh, Central Chapel AME Church for their 150 year wow. ending, celebrate, ending celebration. Cool. Wow. Good, right. And that you said that's. I'll bring it on the 5th. January. Or, <coughs> you said January or December? December. Oh, December. December. Oh, okay. December. Okay. For okay. The first meeting, and I think that it only requires one reading, right? Right. Right. Yeah. So I'll bring it to that. Um, <clears throat> I was looking at the minutes, and I noticed that we had talked about having a meeting with the township trustees, in particular, to look at zoning on the western, the Jacoby Creek area. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if we want to start thinking about setting up such a meeting is that something that the, did that did the economic sustainability commission talk about that at all um, not really is that something that which discussion do you think should happen first or can they or do you see them as potentially separate I mean I think they probably mm. are separate, separate. discussions yeah. um, I mean, it actually will probably be nice to officially tell them that we purchased the property. I mean, they were very involved. I, they probably know at this point, but they were very involved at the time. Um, I would say at, at the first of the year, like that's something that I think we should aim for after the first of the year, but let's put it as a priority. Um, they do meet the same night as us, the same nights as us, so. Maybe the <coughs> fifth Monday? Is, yeah, what it, Judy, can you do a fifth Monday search for mm -hmm. next time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Anything else for the good of the order? Well, I'll, I'll just mention, and it was partly why, Rachel, I asked you the question since you're still here. Um, the revolving loan fund recommendations are going to come to us the beginning of January as well. And uh, an idea to solve our um, financial peace problem is to work with uh, the, the Yellow Springs Credit Union. So if we can find out, you know, what, yeah, what the possibilities are. Conversations to that, okay. that with the uh, local investing group. Yep. Yep. So anyway, so that will be coming. And, uh, and I think it is yeah, exciting. Also, I'll have some recommendations on uh, investments. I don't know if that's something that you all <coughs> want to dive into or if I just handle it with Patty and Melissa. I'm not sure how you want you want us to bring forward those recommendations. Do we have to pass the? By, do we have to pass legislation? No, no that's, that's you know you just basically I mean, made, I, made I that think possible. Our, our investment policy does permit us to go ahead and, right. and make those decisions without counsel. But certainly, if you're ever wanting to know what we're up to, <laughs> well, you make your quarterly reports, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So you'll do a year end. You'll have a year end report. Yeah, and so, I have a quarterly okay. report actually that didn't make the deadline yeah. for tonight's meeting. But okay. Yeah. Cool. And, and if there are ever any questions, I mean, I'm sure Rachel would be happy to come to a meeting, or Melissa and I can always explain, you know, what, right. what we're looking at, what our strategy is, and okay. how we're approaching things. Sounds good. Yeah, it is. It's great. I appreciate Patty and Melissa's help on this. So can I get a motion to adjourn? So, second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Everybody vote tomorrow. Get out and Already vote. Already did. <laughs>